And just like that, we have a brand new community portal for the new marketplace district. So between episodes, we ended up having a poll where we wanted to build our new marketplace portal at, and we decided on this location here. And we also threw around a few ideas as to what to build the portal in. And we tried to do the old portal design, but it really did not fit in over here. It looked really, really out of place. So we decided to see what else we could come up with. I ended up coming over here and starting inside of a creative copy of the world to see if I couldn't build a tree because I've never built a tree before and it was a new interesting challenge for me. So I wanted to try to build a tree and the tree started coming along pretty good inside of the creative world. So I ended up bringing it over to here and that was before I ended up doing the canopy and everything else on it. Well, about halfway through, Gigi decided to come over and give me a hand with it. And I must say, I'm very, very pleased with how this thing turned out. We added a little tire swing here. And then we have a bunch of roots and everything going down to the ground, making it look like it has a really solid foundation. I ended up flipping my horse back over here and I renamed him Tigger. Because this horse, although he's not very fast, he does jump very, very high. So I thought Tigger was a very good name for him. We ended up lighting this thing up with a bunch of different lanterns all the way around the tree and putting some vines on it as well. And then we also ended up putting in a swing here. And here I am sitting watching the sunset or sunrise. Well, actually neither one because the sun does not set or rise over there. It sets over there and rises over there. So um, I'm just, I guess, looking at the ocean. Anyways, then we have a little table here. We have a few lanterns. That way we have this well lit up. That way we don't have any mobs spawning. And then we also have a couple different bushes that are growing and wrapping around this thing, making it look very organic. Oh, and we cannot forget our bird up here. He's up here guarding his nest, and it looks like he actually had an egg fall out of the nest, which is very unfortunate. However, he will sit here and just watch people come and go throughout the marketplace district. Alright, I had to sleep, that way you guys could see what I'm talking about a little bit better. Anyways, GG ended up connecting the path all the way over to here. And from this point on, I ended up adding in to the graveyard here. I ended up putting in another gate here. That way we can access it from both sides. And I also put this wall design all the way down through here. And the wall design is also all the way down through this side as well. And I also made it to where there's a one block gap where you can walk around and walk through this as well. Up here, I do plan on taking some fences and putting them along here. Because I think it needs a little something extra. So uh, that's what I plan to do here in the future. However, as far as right now goes, we do have plans. So uh, let's get to it. So here we are inside of the warden. And if you remember on the last episode, I ended up running out of all of this blackstone. And I really need some more of it. So that's what we're going to take care of on today's episode. And I have a really, really cool farm design plan for you guys. So let's go ahead and get to it. I've just about got all of the materials gathered up. And we're going to head over to the location in which we are going to build this thing. I know it seems like I've been building a ton of farms this season. And the reason for that is, well, I have been building a ton of farms this season. I have not forgotten about building and I really want to get started building. However, I do also want to supply all of the members of the server with all of the different blocks that they need in order to complete their builds. And to really bring out their true creativity. So although it does set me back on getting building, it is a worthy sacrifice and I'm happy to do it. However, whenever we get some more members inside of the future, then I'm sure they're going to start selling a bunch of stuff inside of the marketplace district. There will be more shops and more stuff to buy and that will give me a lot more free time. However, I just about got all of the blocks that I want to sell and then I'm going to start building here hopefully in the next couple episodes and uh, really start working on my base and then also my project that I have over here planned. And then I also have a area that I have marked out for my mega base, which is something that I really want to get started on as well. So hopefully we'll get a couple more of these farms knocked out and then we'll be just about ready. And right over here at Slucer for 2.0 is exactly where I want to be. Well, not really in this dimension, but inside of the nether dimension. So we'll go ahead and take down the quartz out of my face and we're going to mark them down. Divide them by eight, and then I'll see you guys in the nether. And on the nether side of things, we have our industrial portal there. We have our ocean monument portal there. And right down this hallway is where we're going to be building our new farm. So if we just run down here a little ways, right here on the right hand side is going to take us to the exact coordinates 
that are going to link up directly below the gold farm. So I guess I got a bit of diggy diggy to do and then I'll be right back with you. And with a little bit of time and a quick jump cut, we have a large area that we can build our farm inside. So without further ado, let's get into it. And after a few hours, many deaths, and a few moments where I about lost all of my stuff, I just about got all of the piglins that I need. I'm unsure how many I have, however, there's at least 25, maybe 30, maybe even more inside of there. Anyways, I was trying to get these guys to spawn over here inside of this nether waste biome, which is pretty close to the fortress and where all of my stuff is. You can see that one finally spawned there, however, they were spawning very few and far between. Anyways, I figured that if I look around, I might be able to find a crimson forest, and... Believe it or not, there is one that is right there. So what I ended up doing was making this tunnel over here. And then this tunnel just kind of goes all the way over to that Crimson Forest. Where I was able to get these guys to spawn a lot more frequently. And I ended up name tagging them and leading them all the way back here, which was no fun. And once I got here, I usually had to dodge quite a few ghasts and blaze and whatever else was waiting here for me. And then lead them all the way down through here down to this area here which is the stairway that runs all the way down to these piglins and you can hear all of them down there however once i got them to come down here i was able to make a quick left and run into here very quickly open these up and then they would fall through and fall down into the pit this strategy seemed to work well let me go down here and show you what i have you'll be able to see a ton and I mean a ton of these guys inside of here and this is exactly what we're going to need in order to make this efficient however they're not quite pushing the place yet and that's what this piston here is for so I'm going to go ahead and power this piston here which will push them over into the actual area that I want them to be and that's going to push these guys into place so now I can go ahead and remove this glass block here and replace it up here and then I can break this piston which is going to leave that glass block in place at the bottom there now these guys are directly inside of the center exactly where we want them to be and these guys are ready to get a bunch of gold I can remove these that way we can see a little bit better 
The last thing that I want to do is to let these guys out and make a giant piglin bomb. Because that would be absolutely no fun. And you can see these guys are standing on side of the bar here. And that's going to allow all of these items to drop down into here. I have this to where I'm basically using it as a piglin shuffler. I can push the glass block into here. And since it's a transparent block, it's not going to hurt the piglin. However, whenever it pushes in, it is going to knock whatever items are on top of that iron bar down to land on top of that block there. That block is pretty much our metering device. So whatever items are going to land on there, and there's going to be a bunch of them. This piston will quickly push it out of the way, allowing all of the items to drop down. And then there's another piston on the other side, which is going to push this right back to where it's at now. And that's basically going to keep the items from hitting the slime blocks whenever they go and get pushed all the way over there. The reason why we need two pistons for the glazed terracotta is because you can only push these blocks, you cannot pull them. So instead of having one sticky piston, you need to have two pushing pistons. That way you can push it back and forth. Whenever it falls down here, we have a slime block, which is going to immediately launch everything over here. And then it's going to pass the string on the observer, which is going to have a short delay, allowing all of the items to hit that ender chest, which is going to center them over these two blocks, where it's halfway between the ice and hoppers. And whenever that happens, the slime block is going to then push out the slime block, slingshotting the items all the way across here. And then we have the same thing that happens over here. They pass a string, which is going to trigger that observer. However, it does not align it on this end. And then it's going to shoot it all the way across to that side, which is going to pass the string on the observer, lining it up against that ender chest. And then we have the slime block, which is going to push it all the way down, aligned across hoppers and ice, which is going to sort them all into the sorting system. It's all pretty straightforward and very, very fun to watch. So let's go ahead and get some gold and then we'll fire this thing up. All right, I got it pretty much loaded full of gold or at least enough gold to test this thing out. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see how this thing works. I have yet to test this, so hopefully everything goes according to plan. Go over here and we can throw that lever on. And seems like there's items going. None of these sorters are set up either, so all the items are going to go into the sorter. And it looks like these guys are trading, just like they should. And it's looking like it's working. Everything's dropping down there. Let's see, this should push over. Okay, this is not pushing over, so we need to figure out why that's not. And it seems that I've had a observer face the wrong way. So, I'll throw the observer in there. Now, hopefully, if I can get back around here, this thing will push like it should. Yep, there it goes. Pushed everything off of the top there. That's going to open up, dropping everything down. And very, very quickly, it's going to push all the items across here. Looks like we got a little bit of gold stuck there. We'll have to see. Uh, that's probably because that's on a quick delay. That way we don't want that thing to double pulse. So let's leave that on a two tick delay, see if it double pulses. Yes, still double pulsed. So let's try three tick delay. That seems to be good there. Up here, I temporarily placed in a piece of glass here to keep all the items from spilling out. However, what really needs to be here is another one of these because the glass is going to connect to it. However, the composter, it's not going to connect to at all. So we'll go ahead and break this glass, place down another one of those. And then that's going to allow that iron bar to stay in the center without having a extra wide hitbox. I'm also going to extinguish the fire over here because this is going to eventually be to get rid of all of the items that we don't want to sort out of here. So I'm going to extinguish that for now. That way, whenever all of these item hoppers get filled up, that we're not going to be losing any kind of items inside of there. So I need to go and fill up all of these sorters and I'm going to do that off a of camera because that's going to obviously be tedious work. However, what I want to work on next is going to be linking the overworld gold farm to this here. And I'm going to show you how I'm about to do that. So I think up here is probably a good place to do this. I have the gold chest right here and I got a couple hoppers with me. So I can just place down a hopper here and here going into that chest. 
And then, let's see here. Remove some of this. Hopefully we don't find no lava. And we'll just surround this real quick just to keep in these carts. There we go, one on each side. And then here we can place in a portal here. So now whenever the items spawn inside of this portal here, they're automatically going to be pulled out by these hopper minecarts and put down into the hoppers and then ultimately down into the chest here. So we can cover that back up. Then we're going to dig this out just a little bit. Make kind of a little room here. Then we can light the portal. And hopefully we'll be able to link that properly. We'll have to see. So let's head over to the overworld side and see if we can't link it. So I'm now under Slucifer 2.0, AKA the gold farm. And we basically have everything being dispensed into lava down here. However, what I want to do is add a sorting system. And then also, I don't think if I put a portal up here that it's going to connect to the portal that I want it to, because I do also have a portal that all eight of the portals will connect to inside of the nether dimension. That way, if there is any backfeeding piglins, they'll be able to go through there and then be able to walk around and then come back through there. That way the gold farm does not lose any efficiency. So I do want to make this portal down a lot lower inside of the world. So I think what I need to do is take these droppers and have it drop down into a hole, which is going to take it all the way down to the bottom of the world. And then at that point we could feed it into a water stream and then put it inside of a portal which will hopefully connect to the nether side portal as well and a few more hours has passed by however i did manage to get quite a bit done so let's go down below and i'll show you what i accomplished so if we walk down below here not much of this remains to be original and the only thing that really is original was the two trident killers here and here however i ripped out everything that was for the disposal system and I put all of this inside of here. You can see we have an array here of sorting systems. And these are both going to pull out the ingots on that side. And the nuggets on this side. Now I'm not smelting down any of the swords or anything like that as of right now. The swords, the mob heads, and also the rotten flesh is all going into the fire. However, in the future I'll probably reconstruct this and add on to it some more. That way we're able to reclaim everything else and to smelt down the swords and get that extra bit of gold. Anyways, over here we have all of the nuggets that go down into here. And then I can take all of these, craft this into the ingots, and then I can put it inside of this chest here. All of the ingots will be pulled out of here, sent over to this chest, where they will stay if this is locked. Or I can go ahead and unlock that, and it's going to send this down to the dropper. This dropper has a stair to where it's going to redirect it and drop it straight down over the hole. And at the bottom of that hole, all the way down is a water stream that's going to bring it into a nether portal. I have not tested the nether portal side of things yet, so I'm going to take all of these nuggets, craft them into ingots, and then I'm going to put them in here, allow it to drop it down, and then we'll have to test it out and see if it works. So I got this loaded up, so the way that we turn on the dropper system is just turning on the trident killers, and then that's going to start the droppers. And that will run all five of the droppers. We have four up here. That's going to drop items into the water stream. And then we also have this one down here, which is responsible for dropping the items down into the hole here. As you can see, this thing is unloading super fast. And it's going to drop all of those down inside of the hole there. And at the very bottom of that pit, we have to where everything will go down, landing inside of this water stream here. And then it will all be pushed into the nether portal, which is going to go into the piglin bartering farm on this other side of the nether. And now for the moment of truth, we need to see if all of that gold is making its way to the farm. And if everything went according to plan, it should be being pulled down out of here. As it is through this chest. And it is now being filled inside of the hopper here along with a piece of netherrack. And it all looks like it came through one side of the nether portal, which isn't really too big of a deal as long as it's making its way into here. Now, since this thing is filled up, we might run into an issue down the road since there's only five spots inside of here. So we might have to extend this further and add some more hopper minecarts to it because I don't think it's gonna pick up all the way on this side here. Well, it's about that time of the video. Let's get these guys trading and uh, See if this thing works correctly now bear in mind that i do not have 
bunch of these actually i don't have any of these sorters set up so they're all just going to be sucked into the open hoppers and this is exactly why we do our testing all right a few last minute tweaks and we are just about out of gold this thing goes through gold really really quickly however that should have fixed a few problems that i had so let's see could be shooting it really quick trading there it goes all the way around the loop hits the end going to go left and then it's going to hit the end and go this way as well and hopefully with everything set up for sorting systems then it should be able to hopefully keep up with the output of these guys because this thing puts out a serious serious number of items well guys that's going to wrap up today's episode if you enjoyed the episode then please go ahead and hit that like button for me as it really does help out the channel and it helps new people find my content if you have not done so yet hit the subscribe button as well along with the bell notification that way you get notified on each and every upload that i make including project bedrock and tutorial videos if you would like to support my videos i do have a patreon open now and all of the links for that you can find down inside of the description below and just opened up a patreon only server so that's pretty exciting as well and i hope that you guys come and be part of it between this episode and next i'll be working hard to stock up on my gold supply and doing a lot of afk time that way i can get this farm filled up and also be working out all of the kinks and all of the bugs with it so hopefully by the time the next episode rolls around we should have a fully functioning farm with all of the sorters filled up and everything working the way that it should as always let me know what you think inside of the comments below any recommendations are greatly appreciated thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye